uh, you know, self-replicating ideas that start getting carried from person to person through speech and symbol and rituals and gestures in order to create support for a war on terror and also to create tolerance for diminishing domestic freedoms. Freedoms we wouldn't even have dreamed about a decade ago giving up, but now we're willing to give them up because we need somebody to step in now and save us from the destructive road that we are on. And I will say this, that in addition to Bush's inaugural references to the angel in the whirlwind, and there were other occult things in those inaugurals I don't have time to talk about today, but a thorough examination of the semiosis, of the symbols, of the signals, the things happening on 911 and following 911 do seem to affirm what linguistic specialists and semioticians that I consulted over the last 24 months in the research for this book, uh, Apollyon Rising 2012. By the way, I finally wound up with 6,000 pages. I don't know how many states we visited. I don't know how many scholars and authorities. How do you compress all that into 360 pages? I don't know. We tried to. Uh, we just figured nobody's going to want to buy a six to eight thousand page book. So, uh, and I'm not popular enough to write a series that long to get anybody to read. But we came to believe what they were telling us. There is persuasive evidence of an occult signature marked against 911. There is something there when you begin looking at the symbols and the signs and the numerology that is way too redundant. I mean, for it to have been chance would be in the order of hundreds of millions to one that all of these things that are known to be important to the occult society would turn up in one event. Let me very quickly. Ah. That must be what it feels like to have cotton mouth. I wouldn't know. Uh, but uh, quickly, some people have pointed out how the number 11 uh, is known as the 11th hour or the last opportunity to stop an emergency and how that number turned up over and over again uh, on 911. Other people know how the phone number called during the emergency, 911, matches the date on which the Twin Towers were attacked. But frankly, uh, folks, in occult numerology, the number 11 means much more than that. It is the first master number, and it actually represents a dark vision in occultism. When it is doubled to 22, um, the vision has been accompanied with action. And finally, when it is tripled to 33, that number again, it means that vision and action have combined to create accomplishment in the world. Therefore, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask if it was not more than mere coincidence that exactly 11 years to the date following Herbert Walker, George Herbert Walker's New World Order speech, 11 years to the date exactly on September 11, 2001, Flight 11 crashed into the Twin Towers, which not only formed a Masonic-like pillared gateway, and I wish we had time, and in the book I do spend almost an entire chapter explaining the importance of pillars in Freemasonry and how the occult belief means that you have to move beyond them, you have to move through them in order to produce uh, the accomplishment that you're trying to attain, and then as far as establishing the new Atlantis, it was always the dream of both Bacon and his Rosicrucian adepts, that when the day finally came, they'd have to move through those twin pillars of Hercules in order to attain. So they had to move beyond these uh, twin pillars, but let me get back to what I was talking about. By the way, I pastored 25 years, and that's why I've got these notes right in front of me, because I said I have a lot of territory today, and if my body will hold up, I've got to get from A to Z and avoid these pig trails as much as I can, or the old preacher will come out, and then suddenly we never went anywhere. Uh, but the... Hallelujah. So, but um, architecturally, they also configured the number 11. Also consider that Flight 11 hit the Twin Towers first, and Flight 11 had 11 crew members. New York was the 11th state added to the Union. New York City has 11 letters. Afghanistan, the first nation in the United States to attack following 911, has 11 letters. 
George W. Bush has 11 letters. The Pentagon, also attacked on 911, has 11 letters. And that list, by the way, goes on so long that pretty soon you start thinking, okay, this either means something, it's the, most, it's the biggest coincidence in history, or those so-called gods that they worship are laughing at us. But, could all be coincidence. Another enlightening observation also manifest that day has to do with the number 77. 77 is also a twin master number, but it stood out on 9-11 because of Flight 77 that hit the Pentagon, which is located on the 77th meridian, and the foundation stone for the Pentagon was laid in 1941, guess when? On September 11, in a Masonic ceremony. Now what could be even more important than those types of bizarre facts is that the number 77 is known as an illuminated signal for the Masonic revenge of Lamech. This is drawn from Genesis 4, 23, which says, And Lamech said to his wives, Cain, how does it go? If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy and sevenfold. Uh, Lamech was a descendant of Cain, the first murderer in the Bible and the father, this is important, of Tubal Cain. He was a master craftsman. In Masonic tradition, the lineage of Lamech is very important because he is considered to be the forefather of Harim Abif, the first grand master, of course, of the order of Masons and the chief architect of their temple. But the name of Lamech's son, Tubal Cain, is used as the title for a secret hand grip in a uh, Masonic ritual that bestows passage of the 33rd degree or the 3rd degree uh, Master Mason. And ladies and gentlemen, that's more than superficially important because hand grips in Freemasonry form a Luciferian antithesis to the biblical concept of virtuous power transference or blessings through the laying on of hands. Uh, the mason is actually instructed to follow in the footsteps of his forefather Tubal Cain. Why? In order to master the seething energies of Lucifer that are in his hands. End quote. Well, let me just read it to you. Celebrated 33rd degree Freemason Manly P. Hall in the Lost Keys of Freemasonry. And, and Dr. Stan, I, I believe people can get that book from you. The Lost Keys of Freemasonry. It's not easy to find. I would, uh, I would uh, uh, encourage you to get that from uh, Dr. Monteith. If I start going too long, you just throw something at me. In fact, you know what I did? Where's that? <laughs> Put that right there, look at it every once in a while, and pay no attention to what it says. <laughs> uh, here's what he said in the Lost Keys of Freemasonry. The day has come when fellow craftsmen must know and apply their knowledge. The lost key to their grade is the mastery of emotion, which places the energy of the universe at their disposal. When the mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mastery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands. And before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly apply energy. He must follow in the footsteps of his forefather, Tubal Cain, who with the mighty strength of the war god, hammered his sword into a plowshare." Um, the, uh, the relationship between Lucifer, and I don't want to get bogged down in this, but I want you to understand it. The relationship between that and possessing the mighty strength of the war god is explained actually in various Masonic sources as being a reference to the Roman god Vulcan, the son of Jupiter and Juno, who was a sun deity associated with lightning and a volcanic fire to whom human sacrifices had to be made. More important, however, scholarship shows that Vulcan is, is the uh, extra-biblical version of the st biblical story of the fall of Lucifer to the earth in the person of Satan.